Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Deadfire with me, Bring It On. Checking with the Bardados and see if there's any new dialogue. Now that their head of the family has been arrested. Mm -hmm. Also, it might be worth waiting until nighttime to come and loot that chest. Even with the Veleras gone, my family is not without enemies. Mother speaks highly of you. Her trust is not easy to earn. Nope, he's still here. Alright, next on the agenda is to return to the Undercroft, speak to Mad Marina, and see if we can't keep the food flowing into the gullet. Through less than legal means. Worry me, Alof. I'd be letting the lass out to play more. It isn't you, and I didn't ask. Could make a right nice excuse to be exploring your... <laughs> well, everything, I. You do realize you're not the first ill-mannered Orlin to suggest that? Hold it right there, mate. The pirate stares you down, and clutching the hilt of his sword. His arm is rubbed with muscle and striated with pale scars. State your business. I mean it. Spill your guts or spill your blood. I came to see your captain about the Reparu. If you've come to see Mad Morena, God shield your soul. He swipes the cutlass to point at the squat fort along the eastern lip of the cavern. Far be it from me to be stopping your march into death. Captain's there. And she's in a fit of a mood, so step lightly, I. Bide where you are, lovesome. Well, regale me. <laughs> Punch her in the mouth. You know Dario? Of course. He's my landlubbery contact in the gullet. Once, he was a master sailmaker. Lots of Principi crews vied for him, but he lost his footing in the rigging one day. And after that? It's a mistake sailors make only once. He shattered both legs. It was Elia's mercy that he broke nothing more. But after that, he lost his taste for the sea. Now what makes you a pirate, Lafsom? I'll bet you're going to tell me. Sailing. It's sailing what makes you a right pirate. Sure, plundering too, but leave the seas and you leave the Principe. She grins. Perhaps Ferrante would disagree with you. Aye, but Aldi's wouldn't. And she's the only other captain what matters to me. Okay, so we're starting to see the split loyalties in the Principe. You don't see me flying Ferrante's flag now, do you? My loyalty lies with the new blood. The future, and the strength of the Principe. I've got the Luminous Adra. I invite you to hand it over swiftly, then. The captain's expression brightens, lit with her greed. Ah, oh, what lovelies. Aye, fine work you've done. Work I won't be likely to forget. The commander of my fleet. And the relentless leader of us new bloods, Captain Aldis, won't forget either. If you're feeling adventurous, you might call on her at Fort Deadlight. The dwarf laughs bodily as if to an inside joke. Tarn's respite. I stood as a saber, despite it not saying it up here. <laughs> it has cold steel plus one penetration. 
Uh, starts at exceptional, and plus 15% damage is freeze. The Saber's origins are unknown, though its steel composition suggests it may have been forged in the White March. A retired Adiran privateer named Tarn Barris discovered the blade by happenstance in a ruined watchtower on his estate in the Eastern Reach. When the Emperor called Tarn to service during the War of Defiance, he took the weapon with him. Tarn, no longer a young man, was not enthusiastic about returning to sea, but he served the Empire resolutely. He was tasked with interdicting Valian Corsairs who were shipping supplies to rebels in the Deerwood. An honorable man, Tarn elected to spare the ships and crews he captured after relieving them of their cargo. As such, he rarely found a cause to draw his blade. Tarn's largest would be his undoing, however. Within the year, he was killed under a flag of parley while negotiating terms. The Corsair who slew him took Tarn's saber as a trophy. A deal's a deal, then. We'll catch us a fresh contact. Round up the shipments again soon, strong and sure. The Ruparu will have to stand on their own two feet someday. But for now, we'll keep them out of the ground. She dips her chin in a gruff nod farewell. Aye, of course. Yes? Hello, Swabby. Well, regale me. I could just punch her in the mouth. I mean, she may take it as a sign of respect, but I highly doubt it. Okay, so back to the gullet to speak to Anoi. Then I think we've wrapped up all the quests in both the gullet and Queen's Birth. So far. I think next we'll go to the Brass Citadel. The main character's feeling a little homesick, because he is from Roatai. The Brass Citadel, or where the Roatai and set up shop. Wait, what's this? Oh, it's probably repair supplies. Yeah, I think there's two crates down here with repair supplies I couldn't loot yet. Check the shops here real quick, now that we have some more change in our pockets. Also, I need to compare the new Saber to Adair's current. So Adair's will eventually lead to a crit. But Tarn's Respite has guaranteed more penetration. Which so far with slashing damage has been our biggest obstacle to overcome. And also freeze damage. Well, let's go ahead and swap to this. What are the upgrades? The Fortune's Folly on Min's Fortune. It's a random affliction for 10 seconds to target on crit. That works well with that. Lucky Strike, plus 15% crit damage. It's a pretty tough call, but I think I'd go for the damage. Because that way you know what you're getting. This may not benefit you, at least as much as you want it to. 
And then, where's it at? The Brittle Frost, a minus one target deflection for 60 seconds on hit. Kind of stacks 10 times. And Deep Freeze, minus 1% target action speed for 60 seconds, also stacks 10 times. Yeah, I like the Brittle Frost. So let's swap to that for now. How may I help? Of course. There is something I can get for you? Of course. It's not too shabby. It's just so darn expensive. I can't even afford it. I think this would be a good upgrade for Seraphin. Yeah, and it just straight up upgrades the previous effect. That's cool. Yes, indeed. Yeah, I find it a little odd. You don't often see purely defensive light armor like that. I feel like it's usually designed around casters and other backline folks. So color me intrigued. I didn't mean to check out the other two merchants while I was there, but it's fine. Yes? Of course. What for, Cap? Yes? Nice and quiet, I. Aye. Ahoy. First time we came here, he was standing in this corner. I'm gonna see if he trolls back over there so we can loot this. How may I help? He may not at night time. The old man grimaces some attempt at a smile. He inclines his head to you, indicating he's aware of your presence. The principi will supply food again if more Raparu work with them. I have no choice but to hope this venture together fares better than our last. We will accept the principi's generosity and work to return it. Tenfold. Never can I thank you enough, Watcher who has the ear of both kith and gods. Always the Raparu will know of your kindness. Should you need refuge within Nekadaka, know that the Raparu will stand by your side. Take care, old man. May Amira's winds ever fill your sails, boy. We will not forget what you have done for us. How may I help? Yes, I do think the Dawn Star option is probably the best option.
Yes? Because now they got to work for the Principi, which are essentially a crime syndicate. Also, ever since we helped... Uh, what's her name? A uh, Pitley. With the antidote for the Drowner's Lung. She probably would have helped us right away. I would have had to do all that running around for the Principi. Oh? Indeed. Nice and quiet. Oh? Watch here. To the Brass Citadel. Halt! What is your business at the Brass Citadel? Cool. Burrowtie exclusive dialogue option. I cross your arms and I cross your chest. Tom sees Trencher. You were the mysterious watcher. The one who nearly caused a riot in Queensbirth. His mouth quirks in a grin. Forgive my ignorance. I did not know you were from the rough country. He crosses his arms over his chest. The Grand Secretary Atsura wants to meet you. His office is on the lower level of Imperial Command. Up the stairs. He points to the steps. Once you're inside, Go downstairs through the room on the right. Is he in charge around here? Hazanui Karu is the ultimate authority in the Brass Citadel. He crosses his arms over his chest in salute. But she must endure the sops at the palace. He rolls his eyes. When she returns, I'm sure she will grant you an audience. For now, Atsura Nui speaks with her voice. For someone who talks so much, you seem to care about very little. Oh, apologies, lad. Didn't realize we'd be only ever speaking of subjects deep and meaningful. Oh, don't strain yourself on my account. Powder House. You must think I'm an idiot. Back, you got one thing right. So where does this take us? Oh, to the walls. The cannon looks recently polished. Green islands and blue skies. The locals don't know how good they have it. Only your people have traveled as widely as ours. Why does your Ranga carve his name into a rock? The Ranga Nui. And it's a commemoration to show what he built. Oh. Then did your Raparo also write their names on other stones? Will do. Should I click on the thing behind you? Oh, that's what it says. Uh, for the glory of Roatai and the strength of the Ranga Nui 2818 AI. What has it visited Hasago? What disaster darkened its halls? Brave trenches call for justice. Kahanga, fold their hands. Mighty winds sent us north to the shores of Rarotai till our five ships bore us south to dead fire once again. All right, let's get back over here and make our way in from the the main entrance here. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Sure. On it. The metal is as smooth as marble and polished to a shine. Let's check out Udo or Udo's Gunsmithy. The scrolls are filled with meticulous diagrams of rifles and pistols. I? I shall. I shall be discreet. I'll see what I can do. It is done. Yes? I? I shall. Indeed. Let's see if he cares about. I'll see what I can do. Oh, skill's too low. How may I help? I've got it. These guns look ancient, but the metals is still polished and the wood perfectly smooth. Let's just be metal, not plural. Indeed. Man greets you with arms crossed over his chest. He has a massive scar tissue where his left eye would be, and his hands are knotted with bulging tendons. Looking for a pistol or an arquebus? For Rawatai makes the finest guns in Aora, and I make the finest guns in Rawatai. Except you're not in Rawatai. <laughs> what makes your gun so special? Craftsmanship. He holds out his knotted hands keeping them entirely still as he speaks to you. They're covered in small burns and scars that blur the varied pigmentation of his skin. If you ask my superiors at Imperial Command, they'll tell you our main exports are saltpeter and metal. Those are just things. They're prized because of what we do with them. He reaches under the counter and presents a blunderbuss, holding it out for your inspection with his ever-steady hands. It's a high-quality piece. Rawatayan industry is about discipline, precision, mastery of a careful art. Those qualities guide all that we build. He puts the blunderbuss away. Let's see what you have. Dragon's Dowry. Archibus, two-handed. Obviously. It has a veil piercing. It's legendary, right out the gate. Grants Dragon's Breath. Generates a fearsome vertical sheet of flame, inflicting burn damage on anyone moving through it. And Rune Lock. 10% chance for Wilder to suffer 10 burn damage on launching attack, plus 20% damage is burn. My stable Rune Lock reduces it to 5%. Volatile increases it to 15%. It increases the uh, damages burn. Blazing Fury dramatically increases attack speed for a time, but sloppy reloading and burning rune powder cause the wielder burn damage over time. Serpent's Rage fires a cluster of unavoidable fire projectiles, inflicting burn damage. The burst of rune powder causes the wielder to receive burn damage, however. Interesting weapon. Seems like no matter the path you take, you're probably going to get hurt using it. Alright, Scordeo's Trophy. Starts a superb uh, opening shot. Scoring hits with this weapon grants a stacking minus 5% recovery time with melee weapons for 30 seconds. And critical shot plus 15% crit damage. Vincolo Scordeo acquired this ivory furnished pistol from the second captain he ever led a mutiny against. Leading mutinies it was, in fact, one of Scordeo's few talents. He was a mediocre sailor and a poor pirate, mostly because of his acute distaste for following orders, but he was an excellent turncoat. The mutiny went off without a hitch. Scordeo disarmed the captain and shot him in the head. That accomplished, Scordeo took command. 
His brief stint as captain was cut short by a second mutiny soon after, however, and he found himself marooned on a small atoll. His treacherous shipmates have been kind enough to leave him the clothes on his back, his new pistol, and a half a bottle of rum. Unwilling to pull the trigger on himself, Cordeo drank the rum and waited to die. Alright, so you can get uh, better crit damage. Uh, same crit damage, but with plus two penetration. An opening barrage. Uh, scoring hits with this weapon grants a stacking minus 5% recovery time for 30 seconds. Okay, so it upgrades it from just melee weapons. And strategic blitz. So stacking. Alright, so it just doubles the uh, recovery time percent against melee weapons. Still pretty pricey. But might be worth it for Seraphin. But I'm not going to waste that much money on him because he is not going to be part of our A team. At least that's not the plan currently. But nothing is set in stone. Kajix. While Kajix is following you around, you're gaining some health when you deal the killing blow against an enemy, and your party moves more quickly in combat. Aye. Indeed. I'm sorry, but this area is strictly off limits. The young guard draws himself up to his full height, crossing his arms. What is this place? Private property of the Royal Deadfire Company, that's what. He eyes you warily. Can I just look around inside? Sorry, my orders come from the Hazanui herself. If I try it, it probably stops. I still you. can't let you through. Oh, that's fair. With sails unfurled and sword held high, to battle for glory and Rao Tai. Faithfully done, Emiani. Report to Wakoyo Nui when your hands and your temper have healed. That's the last time I ship out with some soft-handed runt. I've got all sorts of goods and supplies. Take a look before you head back out. Why are you working at a Rawatai and outpost? Because I'm from Rawatai. Or, to be more specific, my ancestral home's been part of the Empire for decades. A few generations now. She chuckles. How did your homeland become part of Rawatai? The usual way, I guess. Their soldiers beat ours. She shrugs. Doesn't that bother you? She looks you up and down. Her eyes narrow with suspicion as she hesitates. Then, she adopts a careful, blank expression. No, of course not. Don't see why it would. There, uh, something else on your mind? So if we weren't Rawatai on ourselves, she probably would have given us a different answer. Uh, what's it like living under Rawatayan rule? I don't know. I never known anything else. We've got the Rawatayan's fancy new irrigation canals now, and the roads have gotten better. The ones leading into Chakoa, anyhow. She pauses, lost in thought, and smirks. Funny thing is, the further you go on them, the nicer everything gets, and the more it all looks like this. She nods at the stone walls and towers. Let's get back to business. That's a better subject. She smiles carefully. Let's see what you've got for sale. Take a look. So I wonder, I'm thinking the powder storehouse at some point may get a quest to uh, sabotage the Royal Deadfire Company. And so we blow the storehouse to blow up the Citadel. I wonder if she plays a role in that. Alright, so Gauntlets of Ogre Might. Plus two might, always good. A Ring of Greater Regeneration. Plus three health restored per six seconds. 
This twisted wire ring was cold rot from living steel. It courses with healing soul energy. And charm of bones. It is comprised of various small bones affixed to a cord of sinew. This macabre necklace stinks of the grave. The noise created by the bones clicking together sounds like a gruesome chime, causing your hair to stand on end. You call the restless ten charges. So it's a random vessel to fight for the wearer. And there's a lot of vessels in the game. I wonder, um... Interesting. And lay onto slumber, plus two intellect, and plus five accuracy against vessels. Yeah, we can make use of all that. We already have gauntlets. Alright, I will give this to Adair to stack with his um, fighter's recovery. Do you have a need for this? So I think Jody would get more bang for her buck with the Charm of Bones. Let's give that to her instead of the Resolve. That will increase her the duration of her buffs. And this I could give to a few... I'm actually a big fan of this. If it was crits to hits, I wouldn't care for it as much. But hits to grazes is good. Yeah, I think she'll get these as well. I'll give Aloth his own heal. Okay, that works. Spent a lot of money there, but I think it was worth it. Alright. I'm going to call the episode here. And the next one I speak to... I think he said... Emmy Inny? I think all, both the eyes were pronounced... As their own, uh... Syllables. And then we'll continue exploring the Brass Citadel. But for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one.